this thing on this. Mm. I guess you're supposed to. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Why? It says press. So you press the thing because it says press? Yes, press it. Press the button. Keep pressing the button. Hey, Vinyl Community Jeff here. Gonna jump on another thread. Yes, another thread. This is for Brandon Obert Hall, Mr. Hall of Fame. Um, simple one, kind of a randomizer. We've done random things before. I did these series on every perfect 10 where I just pulled every 10th album. That was a random pull. Here's one for you, and this is just using Discogs. If you have your music cataloged on Discogs, which in my case I do, I have, I think, every piece of music, CD, cassette, vinyl, Every piece that I've run across in this house has been, over the years, cataloged in my collection on Discogs. So, Discogs has, by the search bar, a random item button. Not really a button, just a link. You click it, it shows a random item. I'm not exactly sure why they created that, what their intent was as far as the purpose. But it can be fun sometimes if you're kind of in a, uh, you know, you got a what I want to listen to today and I don't really care so you hit the random button and let it choose for you now in my def my situation uh, as would be you know I guess the majority of people depends on if you've got what you've got on there uh, I have everything like I said CDs cassettes everything so I did have to repeatedly hit the random uh, item link more than just the 10 times because I wanted to stick with vinyl and so when CDs came up Hit the random button until vinyl came up. So, random 10 pieces of vinyl. Um, just let's see what they came up with. Interesting stuff. So, first thing it came up with was Fathom by Mortal. I know, not many people probably know this band. Um, they would fall into the Christian industrial metal type feel, industrial uh, sorts. Um, their first album was just absolutely blew me away. It had a lot of movie clips and stuff that you hear in industrial type music. It was a little more dance or you know uh, drum machine stuff um not really industrial like some of the metal stuff like circle of dust was second album was a little more guitar driven a little more gritty uh, a little more uh intense at times but still had that same feel so that's what that is mortal um this would have been in the mid 80s early to mid 80s night early to mid 90s so yeah, great stuff. I'm very thrilled that at least the first two Mortal albums have been reissued on vinyl. Um, they had quite a few after that uh, that did not, has not, and they changed styles over time. And then one of the main guys, uh, the main guy from Mortal went on decades ago to join Switchfoot and has, I think, still on Switchfoot to this day or has been for many years. All right, here's another obscure one that it pulled up, Forerunner. Another one that would fall into the Christian pop side of things, um, John Lowry, this is 1984, John Lowry was a keyboard player for Petra, and he did this forerunner. Um, he was still doing Petra, I believe, and he has been doing some Petra stuff recently, so he's in and out of Petra, and this is a side project that he did. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it. I bought it mainly because of his involvement in some Refuge Records, which was you know, one of the rock records back in the day. So I picked this up early on in my vinyl buying career. And then we had a little Live at the Marquee by Dream Theater. One of their live albums, their early live stuff from right after like their second album or so, they uh, put this out. And it's an EP. It's got a handful of songs on it. Um, but it was a great little taste of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six songs. Of course, six Dream Theater songs could be the length of most records. But anyway, it's a short album. Fun stuff, a little live dream theater oh look another one on music on vinyl except russian roulette um the last one with udo before they you know brought in a new singer and then later udo came back and etc so um kind of a little more commercial they were going a little more commercial after metal heart and stuff and so uh yeah, it's it's a good album it's a good album but uh, i prefer the earlier stuff so great stuff had to have it though because love all the udo love all the except Absolutely classic, Restless Breed by Riot. Love this album. Love this album since it came out. Love this band. Love this band since I discovered them around this time. Yes. So anyway, good old-fashioned, just hard rock and roll. 
from the New York area. And so, yeah, if you have never heard of Riot, shame on you. Check them out. The early stuff with Guy Speranza on vocals was great stuff. Uh, the Red Forrester years, which is what this is, great stuff. Um, the uh, They've done stuff since then. And of course, now the band has changed the name to Riot 5 or Riot V, but it's Riot 5 because it's basically the fifth lineup. It's after Mark Real has passed away. And so there's really no, none of the original members, but some of the members from that band have been in prior in versions of Riot and are continuing on in the classic tradition, uh, more uh, along the style of the uh, Thundersteel style, the power metal style. This is just hard rock and roll. The band has changed musical styles once or twice over their career. Anyway, so there. Uh, rock or Bust, ACDC. Gotta admit, you know, I have this. I need to listen to this. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna listen to this after we're done. Um, it's one of those albums, you know, ACDC, they continue on and they put out, you know, new music. And this one, I bought it when it came out. Um, same with Black Ice. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time. It's, I don't want to say it's forgettable, but in my mind, I didn't spend enough time with it to really say a, a lot about it. So, but there you go. This is uh, one of their newer ones. Uh, not their newest, but one of the newest. Um, okay, and then uh, back into the Christian realm. Something New Under the Sun by Larry Norman. Larry Norman, what they call basically now the grandfather of Christian rock. He was in the 60s, the Jesus people, Jesus power, hippie movement, and playing, you know, edgy music that the church thought was a little bit too much. Got a lot of flack for that. Went on to do just a lot of stuff, but never really left the, uh, you know, rock, folk rock you know, sort of hard rock. He tinkered with some different styles, but uh, in his career, this is one of his earlier ones uh, and one of my favorites. This one is really a lot of bluesy feel and it's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say negative song, but bluesy songs. And so the lyrics are really kind of melancholy at times, but absolutely love this album. Fun thing about this, this album cover is a record store in the 70s that is in the town next to mine. Uh, I do not believe it's still there. But I've always wanted to kind of go over there. I know what, roughly where it is, what neighborhood it's in. And I would like to go over there and see if I could find the building. It'd be really great, but I have yet to do that. I've been in that area a lot, just never really drove slowly down the neighborhood to see where would this store have been if it even still exists. I'm pretty sure it's still, probably still a building, maybe some other store. But um, at the time, they had records and the record and afro shop record and afro shop so you know they have albums and and cold drinks took mastercard anyway i want to go find this place interesting over in norfolk virginia and here's one and i cannot remember i got these three albums in a while back and i do not know if i ever showed them so maybe you have or have not seen them i am drawing a blank alternative worship again this is going to be another christian one this one came out real recently there are three albums and they reissued them all just about three months ago or so i'm guessing if i'm thinking correct and it's it's bands it's members from bands like adam again and the choir and uh michael knott and all these people that in the 90s and you know early 2000s would have been in the alternative rock scene and so the first album was a kind of a, it was called unplugged brow beats unplugged and i just fell in love with that album it had all kinds of bands on it um some of the songs had been recorded just for the album some of them had been from previous releases uh it was a lot of more laid back not worship in the sense of church worship in this that you would think of not the you know the hill song type songs just songs that were worshipful but they were still you know in the alternative rock type thing so they put out two under the browbeats name absolutely phenomenal albums and then the third one came around and this is really more it's got half of the album the second whole half is michael knott uh, he was in LSU Underground and some other bands. And then the first side is uh, Terry Taylor and Gene Eugene and Michael Knott. So there's really two more Michael Knott songs, two Terry Taylors and one Gene Eugene. Um, and so, again, it's mainly three guys, and but still, absolutely great stuff. And there are three of these. All three of them were released on vinyl not too long ago. They're all on colors. Retroactive Records, get them from Boone's Overstock. Love them. Was thrilled to get that. I love the first album the most. I live with it the most. 
Second album is great. Third album, I actually didn't really, I don't think I ever got that back in the day, so that's the newest to me. East West Delight in Guinevere's Garden. California band, uh, 90s, grungy. Uh, I just love this band, and I'm not a big fan of that era of stuff, but this was one band that when I heard them, they just hit me. And so I really enjoyed this album. was totally thrilled when they released this on vinyl a couple years ago. Uh, the band has a couple albums out. This is probably still my favorite. They have one called Vintage, which is kind of more of a release of some of their earlier recordings, which I'd love to see that on vinyl one day. This is, I think, their really their key main album. Um, I, have a, I have most of their CDs. They had a cassette early on, which was totally different. But yeah, I just, the stuff I, I have by this band, there is another album that I, I have on CD. Absolutely love this band. Was glad that they put that on CD. We'd love to see their other stuff come out just to have it all. And then, hey, we got some live in Detroit by Thor. Thor, the god of thunder. So, yeah, Canadian rocker Thor made the list here. Um, I recently got a new Thor album. I have not shown it yet. It's, uh, I say new. It's a new vinyl release that I had on CD a while back of an album from 1979. So, I'll back. maybe I'll show that in a later video. But this is this live album from the 80s. Uh, yeah, great stuff. I have I have the deluxe CD of this. It has so many bonus tracks, but I also have this vinyl edition. Vinyl edition, which uh, I believe this is the reissue. Yeah, the Deadline reissue. So it's on black. Um, I do not have the original OG copy of this from the day. But anyway, there you go. Ten random items. Do it. If you have your stuff on Discogs. If you don't, it's a fun place to put your stuff, and uh, you know you can contribute to the database by adding details about your release, and and then you can catalog them, and then you know what you got. You can even sell on there if you really you know want to go that route too. But uh, if you do have your stuff on Discogs, hit the random button ten times and show us what you got. Jump on the thread, and I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.